All right, everyone. It is me, Johnson Chan, and I plugged in the microphone. Um, did I uh, adjust the camera? Yeah, that's good. Okay, very good. No zoom. So, uh, you know, I woke up, you know, reasonably early, like around 9, 11 a.m. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it actually is like, oh, yeah, 9, 11. So, uh, which book call it? Yeah, you know, I did all my routine stuff. You know, markets are up all across the board. It's pretty nice, except, of course, for four coin, which will, I guess, kind of address a little bit, but not much to say. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to be winging it today, you know. Uh, I feel all right. You know, I got like nine and a half hours of sleep, approximately nine hours, you know. And I've actually started playing Tarkov again, you know, just a little bit on the casual side, because I just really need to de stress after, you know, I study my uh, programming lessons and uh yeah it's actually not so yeah like one of the nice things is that the reason why things are so much easier now is because like there are so many good third-party solutions to handle like a lot of the crazy coding stuff right so for example i'm learning how to do uh, i'm doing the intro to multiplayer you know projects course all right and uh yeah it's like unity has their own little multiplayer backend called photon which is this Unity Photon. Um, you know, basically, it just it, it just acts as a backend for the server. So when you click, like, you know, join queue or, you know, go into a match, like, obviously, it has to connect to the server, and then a bunch of shit happens, and then you, the client, just, you know, receives all the good stuff. Well, all that stuff behind the scenes is, all, is a lot of coding. Well, and I don't have to do any of it because I just hire something like this, right? That's how everything actually works on the Internet with games. <clears throat> and then, like yesterday, like past couple of days, I was looking at a, a server backend to operate the game, right? Because obviously, it's going to be MMORPG, right? It's going to be multiplayer. So this, these Photon guys are kind of really expensive. So the best option is actually still the Microsoft PlayFab, Azure PlayFab. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, you could just check out their site if you're really curious, but you know, look at their pricing. Uh, they have very reasonable pricing. Uh, and the thing I have to look at is, there's actually a lot of things I have to look at, but this is the one that I'm looking for. for the free plan gives me 1,000 monthly active users. So, or they call it MAUs. And then they, they don't have to worry about this other shit, right? And then, now this is where it gets, starts to get a little confusing because uh, it says right here, and this is the only mention of this anywhere in the PlayFab site, is we have services we have, where services have separate costs such as server hosting or CDN usage. Those are detailed in our documentation, the PlayFab Game Manager. Now the thing is, I tried looking at this, and it didn't, it didn't say anything about this. So I think when I get to the end of the course, which covers Azure PlayFab, like I'll have to create a, my free account, and then maybe I can find out how much uh, it, it is. Um, and then here's the other thing too. It says there's a thousand people limit, but right here it says it's unlimited users. So it's like, which one is it? You know. So I'm pretty sure it's one thousand users. I think maybe they mean people who create an account but doesn't do anything. You can have an unlimited number of that because that's nothing, right, to process. But if someone's actually like playing my game a lot, like basically every day, then that that should definitely count as an active user. And then I have an indie studio, which apparently they created recently for people specifically for me. Yeah, like I can afford a hundred bucks a month. I mean, it's still kind of like a huge chunk of change. But I mean, I used to pay like what three hundred bucks, three hundred twenty dollars a month, you know, for like a year and a half or two years or something for gym, for gym training. So you know, I'm still I'm still taking advantage of the fact that I'm saving three hundred twenty dollars a month on all that shit. So it's gonna definitely go into stuff like this. Right, because in the old days we didn't have anything like this. So right? as a play fab, and we didn't have like the smartest people in the world, and multiply it by I don't know how many employees work at Microsoft that work the play fab division. Right, we had to create all the code ourselves. That's probably why MMO, MMO RPGs and other video game multiplayer games were so hard to code because you have to literally code every single little fucking thing and then you have to learn javascript and you have to learn sql and you have to learn all this stuff which you should technically still learn but to be honest i really would rather have a specialized professional do that for me and then i just pay them a small fee you know because that way they can keep getting better at what they do the cost goes down and i don't have to worry about it because it's like well you know they handle all the shit for me right and then i don't have to worry about bugs all i have to do is just 
hey, I need more, I need more capacity, so I'll just upgrade my plan and get more people. Uh, okay, so eventually I get upgraded to professional. There, there's no MAU limit, uh, but they charge me per MAU. So this is actually the standard. So if I'm on the pro plan and I get my first thousand players for free, uh, then they're charging me eight per uh, zero point eight cents. How much is this, by the way? So let's say, let's say, well, obviously I'm upgrading to this and I already read the documentation on this site. So basically when I already have more than a hundred, like basically my game blows up, then Microsoft actually starts charging me uh, the actual rate, which is actually fine. Cause you know, yeah, I accept and I deal with the double, which is actually fine. Cause you know, whatever. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be using Azure Play. I really wanted to use something. I really wanted to use these guys, playerio.com. I even tweeted about it and I think. Yeah, and then Dr. Sexy, I guess, retweeted that too, I think. Yeah, she, actually, she did. And, uh, oh, for some reason, this picture's not loaded. It's supposed to be a background cool video game picture here. Oh, wait, what? Oh, it's actually a video. Oh, that's why it's not loading. So these, this definitely looks even better than PlayFab. The problem is, I don't think these guys are actually designed for, like, something like an MMORPG. Uh, their documentation is also kind of a problem. Uh, so, like, basically, if I was making, like, a specific, uh, like, action, an only action type game, and I only need to store, like, a few specific things, right, th then these guys would probably be better. Because uh, I still kind of want to use these guys, too, but... Um, uh, reference, yeah, but, like, eh... Oh yeah, the other problem is the uh, the forums are not very active, and they also said that there's also a problem with uh, the big database. Like they said, they just cannot delete what they want to delete. That's actually a big problem. Uh, also, uh, Azure has like a really nice like uh, interface for the back end. So like all I have to do is just like use their nice little graphical user interface. Like oh, I want to ban someone. Here, here you go, bad. Right. Hey, here's how much money your thing created, uh, your game created. Here's a here's a nice little graph of it. Uh, real time analytics. Yeah, yeah. Here it is. So they have all this cool shit that's easy for me to read and use. And then like I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is good. Right. Player .io doesn't have it apparently. So it's like, all right, I'll just go with the the, the big guys. Because I don't want a cheap option, but I also don't want the most expensive option either. Either, which apparently is these guys. Spatial uh, OS .io, I think was it? Yeah, improbable .io. Oh, so it looks like they redirected me here. Huh. So these guys are like probably the best in the world, and they even do outsourcing, which is the multiplayer guys. But what is it they say? Six hundred years of uh, programming experience. So these these guys, you know, really know what they're doing. They're also I. Like, the, one of the top results at the top is they're very expensive, and they were even fighting with Unity itself. It's like, we're going to revoke your license. They, they, they've since patched up things, apparently. But, yeah, it, yeah, these guys are, those guys are hardcore. So, like, you know, basically, if I'm, like, running a multi-million dollar game, and I need a solution right fucking now before my game dies, and every, and then everybody in the forums is screaming, I was like, why won't you fix this? I can't believe it. You know, like... You know, the real market, I really need the real morning marketplace to pay rent. And, you know, it's like, okay. You know, it's like, yeah, I better fork over. I don't know how much they're going to charge me, but definitely tens of thousands, possibly a couple hundred grand if the problem is, like, really pro problematic. So it's like, ugh. But I guess I'll worry about it then because obviously I'll have lots of money. I'll have a good support team, right? Because obviously I'll have other programmers, right? I'm not going to be doing all this shit by myself, obviously. So. Yeah, but yeah, if we need, if we need it, if we need the people that one hundred percent will basically guarantee that will fix the problem for us quickly, probably yeah, we hire those spatial OS guys. But yeah, they're also not clear about their pricing too, so I can't really use them as a back end. So I'll just stick with the good center right middle ground, but better than the middle ground grounds like uh, like very good. So not above average, but very good option, and that that appears to be Microsoft Azure. Uh, let's say I have 100,000 people and I'm on the Azure Pro plan and that is, holy shit, uh, $800 a month. 
Uh, where are we at? Ten minutes. How is it ten minutes already? Yeah. All right. Well, that's just how it goes. All right. So I'm gonna be minimum two ninety nine a month. Uh, minimum two ninety nine a month. Is it two ninety nine plus my MAU cost, or is it just simply my MAU cost? But obviously, they're charging me the full. Oh, so maybe it's actually just my full MAU cost. So maybe I'm only paying Microsoft eight hundred bucks a month, which actually isn't that bad considering what I'm getting in return. And then uh, let's see, professional gets me. Yeah, it says minimum. Oh, okay, yeah. So it's gonna be. It's going to be 800 bucks a month. So I'm going to get access to already everything. Uh, let's see, professional features. I don't know what player segmentation is, but I get SLA. Oh, okay, I get the SLA. Yeah, consider how much I'm paying. Yeah, I should, I should need that. Real-time rules, maybe testing. All right, so the Indie Studio is actually pretty good, too. I actually get a lot of good shit. I just don't get the uh, service level agreement. That's fine. I mean, for a hundred bucks a month to get basically like almost everything, that's actually pr pr pretty good. All right. So anyway, um, where are we up to anyway? We're up to Clown World number 332, I think. Yeah, 332. Ah, somebody left our community. Yeah, pro actually, it's probably like the old people uh, that used... Because this channel used to actually be my like political channel. And then I got a bunch too many strikes. I wanted to do content, so I created my second channel... And then now we all know how that story goes, and now I'm back here. So it's probably like some of the old timers. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it could be censorship, but I mean, this channel is like literally like dead and coming back from life. So uh, it's like I'm pretty sure I'm not even on the radar. Anyway, uh, Bitcoin searches for this week is still at seven. Uh, looks like they're adjusting this one to eight. So Google is still like trying to figure out what the search interest is. So at least it's better than bear market. So as I said earlier, actually at the beginning, uh, so everything's going up right now. So let's see what that's about. Bitcoin dominance is 64.4%. Uh, it's a little high for my taste. 24 hour volume is a healthy 117 billion. So now that people are getting, finally getting over fears of the coronavirus, everything's now going up. So uh, thank God. All right. Uh, and then people have bought into the stock markets. And actually, let's refresh this again. People have bought enough into the uh, equity markets that now they're not dumping their crypto anymore. So now all the money in the world is just going into equities, securities, you know, basically anything that's a thing that's valuable, right? They're not holding on to cash anymore. Uh, and that's what we want. We even are getting the benefit over here, except of course, well, 4-4 coin is actually getting the benefit. The problem is, oh, I'll address it when we get there. But basically there's some bunch of dumping, okay, I, got, I, I can't say the F word anymore, bunch of pieces of shit that are just dumping for some reason. Or actually, it may not even be a, a, a bad actor. It could just be like someone that's been staking a long time and now they're cashing out their chips. So in which case, I mean, that's technically normal. Like that's what the coin's supposed to do, right? Uh, so we'll see. Anyway, uh, Bitcoin's at 94.52, so pretty good. It's up about 3%. Look at those beautiful uh, spikes upward on the price pattern. It's just going straight up. Right. In fact, it's basically green across the board. There's a couple of red, but we don't even care about those coins. Uh, yeah, but everything is like sharply up. Very good. Litecoin is at a healthy 71.75. It's up 5.48%. Looks like Bitcoin Cash and SV are also going up like crazy too. Yeah. Well, I guess if you did have to gamble, right? I guess you could just pick one of these two. Actually, I'm kind of curious. I don't even use my Coinbase account anymore because of the censorship. Uh, but I wonder, I think you can get Bitcoin. I know you can get one of these. I don't know if you can get both. Coinbase, uh, Bitcoin, SV. Let's just see. Uh, they have a chart, but that's not helpful. Um, what crypto? Okay, let's see. Uh, Coinbase top. Th I don't want their price chart. I just want to know what they are. Uh, here we go. Supported cryptocurrencies. Uh, okay. So, oh, that's interesting. They have a Coinbase and Coinbase Pro. Huh. What is that? They do have Bitcoin SV and they have Bitcoin CH, but Bitcoin SV has a bunch of X's on their Coinbase Pro. That's kind of weird. 
what is uh oh x is send only so for some reason coinbase does not like bitcoin sv because i remember coinbase supports either roger ver or craig Wright, and they hate the other one i can't remember okay Oh, okay, so that's what these numbers are. Okay, so obviously Coinbase does not like uh, Bitcoin SV, but they kind of barely list it just because they kind of have to list it. So they support BCH. Uh, BCH is the one that is uh, going up a lot. Well, yeah, so I, guess, I guess if you need some short-term gambling fix, you know, I, I guess uh, these Bitcoin copycat knockoffs will do pretty well for you. Um, but don't forget, my warning still stands, right? You know, uh, I mean, you'll probably do OK now that finally the coronavirus is done with or all the fear has been uh, dealt with. Right. So you'll probably be able to get away with your gamble for a little while. But remember, when it goes down or, you know, like, you know, you, or worse, you keep doubling down because you think it keeps going up. Eventually, when it goes down, even like, you know, two, three, four percent and you've already doubled down a lot, you know, it's, it's going to start that gambling cycle. So it's like, eh, you know, like uh, I've already been there before. You don't want to be doing that, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna park my shit in Litecoin. So, you know, it's a uh, nice, easy. I don't have to worry about shit, and then it's very nice. So can is just completely useless. So it does look increasingly likely that we're gonna have to use Ledger X to buy our options and short the market, which sucks as well. I get get it for one year. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is up 7.5%, so at least that's doing something correctly. Uh, so it's getting a benefit of the stock market's going up a lot and crypto going up. So uh, it's doing what it basically should be doing. And still no options for this thing. JFC Coin, uh, I decided to actually send them an email right before I turned on the recording button for this video. Because for some reason, JMC has just been under maintenance for like, what, seven, eight days now? It's been a while now. Um, so it's doing all right. Now it's pushed up to four because you can't dump, because you can't deposit or withdraw. So basically, everything's just going up. So I, I just simply sent uh, them an email and then, actually, have they responded back? No, they have not responded back yet. So I'm just going to find out what's up with it, the, because they, I didn't get an email or Discord message from them asking for help. So they I mean, and I don't want them to think that we've abandoned the project. So I just sent them an email. It's like, hey, we just want to check up on you. You know, uh, Mitch is still going to be out for a few days, but he'll still respond right within some kind of time. Do you guys need anything? All right. You know, just to check up. Uh, so we'll see what's up with that. Because when I come out of the game, I mean, I think I might actually use Xala as the payment processor. Uh, it was mentioned a lot in Azure Playfab's back end. For, you know monetizing your game if you're not using like steam or google whatever uh yeah so it's like now i've got two options so it's like hmm, what do i do because maybe if we we're making enough money with xala because a lot of people are you know buying shit through the website or whatever or the pc or whatever uh the pc actually would it be no it would be on steam at that point i'll yeah the pc version will be on steam essentially so we're going to use steam for that I might actually go up to XL and ask them, hey, I was going to pay like 10K to uh, coinpayments.net to implement one of these cryptos. Um, how about, you know, you, you guys give me a much bigger, bigger discount to include the coin instead, you know? So maybe I can look into something like that. And then we're going to, I'm either going to pick JMC coin or 2x2 two two coin. I don't think we can do 404 because right now there's just something crazy going on with this. Uh, before I go to 404, yeah, it looks like JFC should do all right. You know, like they're not delisting JFC. That's my. That's obviously the biggest top concern as always. But they they haven't contacted me, so I don't know. I have to find out what's wrong with it. But I think it should be fine. Um, so yeah, I don't know. What, like, what is wrong with it? Like, nothing even happens with JFC on Corrects that often. Uh delisting policy you know actually maybe they are delisting and like they didn't tell me uh twitter uh let's take a look here uh our website we maintenance oh that's actually that's actually later today all right well tweet that uh there's a coin swap uh easy pay has been swapped by the draw and a swap uh, January 30th. 
Uh, what? Okay, I don't want to be looking at that. Uh, I don't see anything. Um, here's some voting. Here's something. I don't see anything about delisting. I can't use Control F, so not just. Uh, here's another swap. Uh, January twenty second. Uh, there we go. Dead coin delisting. Well, it's not JMC coin. Uh, a correct company will be created to these coin holders. Oh, okay. So now they're doing correct compensation coins. That's actually pretty nice. Uh, yeah. So, well, I don't see JMC listed there. Uh, January sixteenth, January fifteenth. Your 15th we'll go back as like january 10th just to make sure yeah i don't see a single thing here here's cash being delisted the developers have appeared to abandon the project yeah i mean we've obviously not abandoned it yeah there's nothing about jmc at all here so i, I don't know all right so anyway um so, so there's a lot of bad dumping actors or maybe they're just people who are whales who finally have enough stake and now they're just, you know, regularly dumping. I mean, the supply on 404 is already large enough that, you know, this is actually supposed to be happening right around now. Yeah, it's at 3.95 billion. Uh, I really wish we started with just like 10,000 coins. Then we wouldn't be having this problem. I wish I could do the same thing with JMC coin as well. So at least, at least we have two by two coin, which is doing great. Uh, but the good news is at least somebody bought a shit ton of 404 coins. Like we're looking at around 30 million. All right, here's the big buy order. Someone bought a ton. Here's a 8.4 million buy, 13.4 million buy, a 10.2 million buy, a 1.2222 million buy. Here's another 10 million dollar buy. Ugh, 10 million. I wish it was 10 million. 10 million 404 coin buy. Here's another like a little under 2 million. So basically, it's all at the, executed essentially at the same time. So right now the trade volume for 404 is like ridiculous. It's at like twelve hundred dollars for the, within the twenty four hours right now. Uh, so you could zoom in and went as high as thirteen when that guy was buying a shit ton of coins. And then of course some stupid fuck you know decided to, you know dump everything anyway because he's an asshole. Uh, then he dumped at eleven, he dumped at nine, he dumped at ten. Luckily the dumping does seem to be kind of weak ish. But I mean I've seen I've seen someone here actually put up like you know 50 60 million 404 coins and just continues to dump and then hides the thing and then reappears so it's definitely a lot of assholes just dumping coins here um so yeah so i, I don't know we'll just have to battle it out but everything's going up so including jmc and two by two coins so i'm kind of hoping that's i mean technically this coin should be up too but because the dumping pressure is so extreme that it doesn't even actually go up it's, it just comes up it just comes out as people just buying a lot of coins right you know it, it, if it could buy a lot of coins and then push the price upward which would require even more money you know it's like you know, what are you gonna do so i mean unfortunately uh i mean it does look like i mean i'm kind of hoping it'll finally stable stabilize anywhere from like the 9 to 10 mark but this is still way too low it's way too undervalued um but I don't know, we're just gonna have to see. Um, but the thing is, it's still worth a lot of money too. That, like that's the annoying part about this. The price is low, that is not making you feel too good, which I know you shouldn't be like that because Jesse Lee Peterson says that's, I, yeah, Jesse Lee Peterson says that's the devil working your ego. But on the other hand, it's actually expensive to still buy a lot of these coins. So you're like kind of like, you know, stuck. <laughs> you know, it, it's like that crap again. I, I mean, I wouldn't even be okay with just 20 to 22. And I'll just stay there forever, you know. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it is what it is. So uh, there's definitely plenty of buying pressure. If it, if it ever crashes down to one, I am not going to, um, for a long time, you know, move this around. Uh, what you call it, change the the sub satoshi on it because basically fuck the dumpers right and we're just going to force them to uh i mean they'll probably have to dump an unnamed exchange <clears throat> but basically we're just going to try to punish them it's not a good sign but i just like to kind of slow it but that's the thing too like if it goes all the way down to one basically it's lost like 97 percent of its value from when it used to be worth 30. that doesn't make any sense even at 404 percent apr a year so again, I just don't—I don't understand what's going on here, but hopefully uh, the dumpers will lose out on it. 
Uh, two by two coin uh, is get, finally getting the benefit of his bull run. Also, I've listed it on uh, BTC Pop, so uh, that's been pretty helpful too, uh, probably. So now it's at ninety nine to one hundred six. So you know it's doing it's doing very well. Also, I noticed that the people who are dumping four hundred four coin also happen to buy a shit ton of two by two coin. You know, but that could also be the guy who's buying four hundred four also buying two by two. So I mean, there could, there could be a lot of things. So, you know, that'll be solid for a while. And, of course, Compound Coin, as always, is doing stupidly bad. Um, now it's down to about 4,025. Uh, to 48.89 Satoshis of a dog coin. Um, so, you know, this coin's already been beaten up pretty badly, so it can't really go down that much. However, it's still basically considered... I guess it's kind of considered the same thing as 404 coin. You... When everything's going up, you dump, you start dumping the 404 and uh, compound coins. Eventually, that's what's going to happen with um, two by two coin once the supply on it gets too crazy. All right, uh, and then JMC coin, ironically enough, uh, will still do uh, very well because it's only 62.5 percent a year, so it's actually a lot more stable. That's why eventually we made the decision to just simply lower, like basically kill off the APR. But still give something way better than what you would get at a bank. Because uh, we're going for price stability here at JMC. So uh, we'll see how that turns out. Because right. I actually looked at uh, 421 coin, uh, 808 coin. Uh, so 808 coin right now goes for 8 Satoshis of a dog coin. Right? Uh, I forgot what some weird exchange it was listed on. I forgot. Someone told me about it on uh, Discord. So I checked up on it. So, you know, so the hyperinflation, like basically all these high proof of stake coins eventually reaches that point. Uh, however, because, uh, you know, this one's a lot, you know, smaller APR, it'll take a very long time. And it's possible that uh, it's not going to go down that low. Maybe it'll be like a lot, uh, a lot more than eight Satoshis of a dog coin. But at that point, you know, we're talking like, you know, what, trillions of coins, quadrillions of coins. So, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to see what happens uh, with 404. But yeah, for the time being, if it does crash to one, we're not. I'm not going to push to have the sub Satoshis released on it until like a long time. And then, you know, occasionally I'll spend like a dollar a day on it just to make sure that it has trade volume. So it doesn't, so Krex doesn't like get mad or something. Um, so, but funny enough, I've never actually seen them delist coins because the project, because uh, it had not enough trade volume. They only delist if the blockchain breaks the wallet itself just doesn't work for some reason uh and they cannot contact the devs and they say well it appears to be abandoned right so that that seems to be the more common case so uh yeah but either way that's that's what we'll do uh so for, i don't know if any of you are religious maybe you could pray to god to help us out at 404 uh but i don't know um I don't know. As, I mean, the buying pressure is more is more is greater than the selling pressure, but there's definitely something going on. So we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, where are we at now? Twenty eight minutes. All right. So I do kind of need to try to keep these videos a little short because I have noticed that if it gets a little too long, then nobody actually wants to listen to it. So uh, Bitcoin will hit an all time high of twenty seven thousand by summer. Uh, Tom Lee. I mean, that would be cool. Actually, that could be possible. This bull run has demonstrated itself to be extremely powerful, right? It's constantly getting cucked by all this negative bullshit. Like, first it was stupid Iran, right? And then now it's a stupid asshole coronavirus. So basically, we're having like a black swan event, like basically every like three, four weeks. Uh, and the good news is the markets continue to still push up because that's where they want to go. They want to be a hardcore bull run. But they can't because those black swan events are a real problem, right? You know, it's very scary. So everyone just starts dumping everything. Um, so as long as we can finally get past this stupid fuck, because normally this doesn't actually happen. You don't have this many black swan events, believe it or not. Um, and when I say black swan events, I mean very bad events that affect the entire world all right you know that that's that's what i mean you know like these small little things like oh you know some real estate company scammed uh xyz jane doe out of like their investment you know 50 million dollars yeah that's like nothing because you know as a percentage of the whole world's economic activity yeah that's like that's not even a fraction of a penny it's like not even a fraction of a percent 
All right, but coronavirus shit that affects the entire world, and everyone could potentially die from it, and there's no cure. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna spook everybody. All right. Uh, well, except me, of course, you know, because I know better. Uh, so here's just more price action. Bitcoin Cash is up uh, 14%. Halving is nearing. Uh, Bitcoin looks poised for another big drop. So here's another idiot. Uh, seeking alpha is always so low. Bitcoin is bottoming. What are you going to do? Well, at least they're actually generally pretty fair. And yeah, the bot. Well, Bitcoin has already bottomed, right? That was last year, right? During the what when it was as low as like what twenty seven hundred dollars, uh, something like that. Uh, wealth manager makes a massive eight trillion dollar bet. But that's a serious warning. Uh, I think we kind of read this before. Top value called Bill High Rally to ninety five. Warns a hard dump may happen. Uh, let me guess, Tony Vase? It's probably Tony Vase. Uh, uh, Nebraskan Gooner. I hope that's, uh, okay. Well, it's on Twitter, so it's probably fine to say that word. Uh, he thinks it's gonna, yeah. God, this guy's, this guy's retarded. Yeah, it's gonna crash 82, 80, 800 while everything else is going up. The markets are up on fake news technically right uh and it's just what an idiot what an idiot all right let's see what we got here god these stupid cookie things are so annoying luckily they make it easy for you to hit just to hit the accept button mit will transform bitcoin new tech prize to dramatically boost speed uh so researchers from mit say they developed a new routine scheme okay we might actually be curious about that ethereum heavyweights launch moody style rating system for smart contract uh, that's actually interesting. Remittance provider Power 30 million transactions per year joins Ripple. Yeah, three cryptos surge more than 175, beating Bitcoin as altcoin market exploded in January. Very good. Yep, that's what we saw. Ice uh, operator Bitcoin Exchange Bot makes offer to buy eBay. So e pieces of shit at eBay are falling for sale. Maybe for, for once it'll actually be because like the problem with eBay is they were so hostile towards sellers. I just stopped using it. I just stopped using it, right? I couldn't make any money. People, the buyers were constantly stealing my shit. I was like, and I always got the blame for everything. I was like, you know what? Fuck those assholes. So, uh, and, and that's what, and that was that. All right. So, asset manager, Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. On top of that, Amazon obviously must have killed eBay because why would you go on eBay, wait forever when I could just get something instantly for cheap, already cheap, and just get it from Amazon? <laughs> it's like, yeah, e eBay is worthless to me, um, but I'm sure. But I mean, it's still obviously a good brand, and you know, others, and it's got good traffic, blah blah. blah so it still has value. Just it, it's just I wouldn't operate it. Fifty, uh, okay, I don't know. It's like fifty billion. Uh, Bitcoin adoption is accelerating. Diamond crypto on path to rival gold. So very good. Uh, XRP bucks crypto market. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Okay. So let's just see. What did MIT do? How long is this article? Okay. All right. So we're 33 minutes. So we'll wrap this up soon. Actually, after this article, uh, let's see. So MIT says they could boost the speed of crypto by four times. The spy routine solution packetizes transfers and increases the throughput of crypto by using a multi-path transfer protocol in payment channels (PCNs). Through packetization, Spider can complete large transfers on low-capacity payment channels. In addition, the research claimed that the multi-path congestion control protocol ensures balanced utilization of channels and fairness across flows. The new tech asserted that the packet switching techniques commonly use the internet com communication solution also uses queue management to alleviate network congestion issues. Uh, Spider needs less than a quarter of the funds that other solutions such as Lightning Network and Radio Network are required to initiate the transfer. MIT. Uh, uh, you say you're on balance traffic and requires only on chain transaction for every 10,000 traffic rather than achieve full throughput and balance demand. While crypto adoption has grown over the years, delivery of fast payments at scale remains a huge obstacle. Bitcoin can handle 4.6 transactions a second, Ethereum can process up to 15. Uh, this is completely worthless compared to Visa's 1700 TPS. Developers are working to circumvent the issue of scalability by introducing two. Layer payment PCA such as Lightning Network and Raiden. These solutions increase the network's ability to process by selling transactions off-chain. 
How are PCNs come with their own challenges? Yeah, what's the catch to using this? For instance, they require users to deposit funds in escrow accounts. In the current scheme, the funds in some escrow accounts are exhausted more quickly than others. Uh, and on top of that, it's an escrow account. So that kind of defeats the purpose of using this. I mean, I mean, you, God, this would be annoying. You have to then create like some sort of decentralized escrow account to keep it decentralized. Like it just starts becoming overly complicated. So I don't know. Maybe it could work, but I still would rather just use the Lightning network because that because the Lightning network and or I don't know what the rated network is, but I assume it's scalable, right? Just scale that instead. Yeah, you pay a little more, but the point is, once it can scale to like you know infinity and beyond, like Buzz Lightyear would say, then uh, cost doesn't actually matter at that point. Traditional schemes, transactional, blah, 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 blah. Additionally, current PCNs can only send payments in full. If a whale wants to transfer 100 Bitcoin, the PCN will try to find the shortest route. What if the path cannot support 100 Bitcoin? Spire deals with these issues by dividing the transaction into bite sized packets that are dispatched across multiple channels at various rates. Well, I mean, that's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, also, I kind of like this thumbnail, so we'll use that. I don't know. I. I, I, I they obviously need more improvements, but for now, I would just stick with Lightning Network. I actually sent one transaction one time with Lightning Network. It was actually kind of nice. Um, I can't remember if it was fast or it was really cheap or both. I just remember I sent it one time, and I was like, yeah, this is actually pretty nice. Um, I wish more people started using Lightning Network. Uh, so, um, but yeah. But I mean, it'll come along. It's still technically in beta, so... Uh, if you like what you saw, read or heard, hit the like button, the follow button, or subscribe button from where you're watching this from, or on my YouTube's at youtube.com forward slash, uh, actually, what's my rank in Star Wars? Oh, I'm still five. Wow. Well, oh, very impressive. Uh, or my YouTube's at youtube.com forward slash the lemon factor BTC, because obviously it's a stupid URL, uh, and I cannot really change it. So I fully re-added re -added my BitChute channel, so uh, I, I'm really thinking about putting up political stuff, but uh, I don't know, I'll have to think about it because, well, A, it's only going to go on BitChute, uh, B, I really would like to take advantage of the basically instant processing times of BitChute, because now they're actually as good as YouTube for now, at least until uh, another huge influx of uh, BitChute users comes to BitChute. Because uh, I still get way more views get on BitChute. But the problem is, I can't really go crazy wignet on the political stuff, but I also need to tell the truth. So, for example, if I need to read a story that's against, say, I don't even want to say it, but a certain type of story hour at a library, right? You know, I, can, I don't want to risk it, right? You know, even if I say it on BitChute, what if by then, you know, I have a pretty big company, game company, Right, you know, I'm already pissing off the liberals. I mean, Trains Rex, I always thought he was a cuck, but apparently he still doesn't like liberals, so he's still kind of like a pseudo right wing conservative. So, ideally, I would be in his kind of situation. The thing is, I still like to actually cover the news, right? And, and then, like, so for example, I'll, like, I would obviously strip out like the really crazy stuff, like, you know, the big you know who, right? But I'll always say big you know who, right? You know, it's not big government, you know, no, it's the people who control, who really control the world, right? In a certain tribe of countries located in the Eastern Hemisphere, right? You know, you know so I have to, like, be really careful with stuff like that. Um, yeah, so I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll have to think about it, because I would like to do some videos. But on the other hand, I do like, I do like now having the extra free time that I get from doing less. So I don't know, it'll, it'll just be a juggle. But uh, yeah, this channel will definitely be kept uh, clean for sure. This will just be, you know, like Bitcoin shit. Uh, the the one that has a strike, which I think is now gone, uh, the one with 483, the one that actually has my name, which would be this one, I think. Right? We'll use this. We'll keep this as a backup here. No thanks. Um, so I don't know. I'll we'll, I'll figure out something, and then I still have uh, the actual uh, Harbinger PVP channel. So I think that will be the official game channel of my company, and I'll have to rename the whole thing, All right? But that'll, that'll come later. So uh, yeah, so enjoy the rest of your night. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you really care to. You know, it doesn't really. Well, it does matter, but I'm not gonna really push it anymore. 
Uh, I'll see you, enjoy the rest of your day or night. I will see you all tomorrow's videos. And I am going to go off to Target to finally restock in groceries. Because now that I've been, uh, you know, you know, eating less-ish, right? I actually find that my groceries last a lot longer because I can't eat as much, right? Because obviously don't take in too many calories. So uh, it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. I save more money like that way too because obviously I'm eating less food. So I still have plenty of body fat to churn through. But um, now that I've stopped taking those uh, fat burner pills, I've noticed my inflammation has gone back to basically almost nothing now. So yeah. It was actually the uh, the fat burner pill, so we so I definitely know what's happening. My body is burning too much energy. That's why if I get too fat or eat too much food, yeah, you know, my body has to compensate by burning even more energy, and that's what's causing the inflammation. So if I slow everything down in my body, you know, now I can just simply cruise along as my body, you know, slowly eats away at the visceral fat. I didn't even know there are different types of stomach fat, but it's the visceral fat that's causing uh, inflammation. And that's the fat that's like yellowish and presses up against your internal organs. And that's what's causing the inflammation. Uh, so, you know, the more I whittle that away, the healthier I'll get. And then, you know, I should be uh, back to 100% or 99% normal. So anyway, enjoy the bull run. Everything's uh, all hunky dory. Uh, if you choose to gamble on Bitcoin Cash or SV, just remember my warning. Uh, don't keep doubling down, right? You know, you're, you're just, you know, like if anything, you would probably just buy and then hold it, right? That'll probably be safer. Uh, and then just enjoy the bull run, right? But I mean, in that case, I'd rather not have to worry. I'd rather just hold Litecoin because basically in two years when Bitcoin's like a million dollars or whatever, Bitcoin Cash and SV will probably be like, I don't know, 250 grand. Well, I'm just making up numbers. So I mean, Litecoin's already gonna be like 100 grand to like 150,000. So I'd rather just have Litecoin and just not even worry about it. So... Yeah, uh, but that's just me. So anyway, see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and here's my thumbnail.